designing the ways that people communicate intersects with uh, this new technology that allows us to make a lot of progress really quickly, sometimes uh, very imprecisely, and, uh, and thinking about how to harness um, that to the greatest effect. Um, we'd love to share a little bit of what we've built. Maybe create a presentation about something from scratch, like uh, a trip to Tokyo. And, um, and what we're doing here is we're making some assumptions, right? We know that this user is in a product that communicates visual information. Um, we know now that we want to you know, create something about a trip to Tokyo. And now we can start to make a, a bunch of assumptions about you know, the form that that will take on using the building blocks that I just showed you. Um, text, images, um, and you know, eventually other building blocks like you know, linked objects or sort of uh, embeds from the web. And uh, in this case, we've sort of exposed to you sort of a preemptive view of all of the different pages that you might be able to rearrange. Let's say, like, I, I, don't, want to, I don't really want to talk about Shibuya, I want to talk about Ayama instead. Um, and, uh, and I want to refer to them as, like, the calm streets of Ayama. Um, and I want to get going. Henry, can you share a little bit about just what's happening kind of under the hood to make this yeah. work? Yeah, and um, I think one way to think about what's happening is we've sort of told this large language model, right, that, um, that we are in a sort of presentational context um, and that we want to express ourselves in the form of these text blocks that are break broken down into paragraphs and we want to um, express ourselves in the form of these images that we are generating using stable diffusion. And, uh, and we're asking first for an outline that structures our thought process across several steps, you know, the, the sort of preview that you saw me sort of rearrange and edit. Um, and then once we process that outline, we go and determine what each sort of node in this, uh, in this outline can be expanded into using those blocks. Um, and now that I've created this, I can like edit whatever I want here. And this is now a, a sort of a starting point to um, this editing process that maybe would have taken you I don't know, 30 minutes or an hour of research, and there's this sort of deterministic logic um, that kind of informs it, kind of informs the uh, the layout here. And I can rearrange them, and there's only a few ways for this to sort of lay out. And uh, what's really powerful about that is there's a sort of super set of constraints that we can use um, really <coughs> tightly with an LLM, uh, and we'll kind of demo that in a second. Um, one other thing I'll mention about Tome is sort of a an aspect of how um, the format can kind of extend to um, capture different types of data is, you know, you can pop in a link, right, and in this case, um, let's see, this is a oops, web link, and uh, pop in my spline, and now I've got my spline tile here. And, uh, and what Tome sees is, okay, like the user has a tile here with this spline URL behind it, and maybe we can parse something out from that URL, like um, the hash or like the username or workspace behind it. So these are all sort of important building blocks. Interesting shift. Um, and, uh, and I think you'll kind of only get a chance to, to be a part of a shift like that once a decade, it seems. Um, like there was a huge mobile shift, right, where we um, all collectively learned to like tap on things with our fingers uh, and swipe and you know, peak and all the different things that we can do now. Um, and, uh, and we weren't doing that sort of the decade prior. And I think now, like, we're sort of all, I think, maybe learning.
optimistically thought maybe the mic would not work and I would not be standing here talking. You can't hear me. No. no. Okay, how about that? Shut up. Yeah. on your selection and then you uh, use Gen AI, it'll generate whatever object that is in different intensities. So the example that I showed is a fish jumping out of the water. The top part of the fish is generated at 100% intensity while the bottom part is generated at a lower intensity. And the AI is smart enough to figure out the refraction and it just does a really good job in creating the effect of that fish. I'm not seeing anything becoming two fireflies and an exploration is coming soon and then you mentioned things like kind of stitching images together, but like kind of like that idea of like image batching, like a lot of that are things that we're definitely in exploration, which is cool. Yeah, and I can add, add one thing on what you said earlier. Um, I think for most of the people here are interested in like fasting for this AI tool is like a better way to communicate with your clients, you know? Or at least for my experience, it's like um, sometimes when I pitch an idea to them, they agree, like, oh, this is such an amazing idea, but I didn't realize like what they see in their head and what I have in my mind is completely two different things. You guys were talking about earlier, like if uh, AI would take jobs and there's one area of worry, like maybe entry level positions where you're kind of asked to do simple things that you can enable your internal teams to do. Um, that makes me a little worried about people who are just getting into Well, my question is, we talk about theory a lot, and definitely Gen AI is going to change the way we make things, right? So what do you think 